God asked me a question. If in one year I don't say a word to you, will you still believe I'm with you? One year. And they will all look at Moses every morning. When are we leaving? When are we leaving? One year. They, they are still in, they are in Sukkot or in Elam. One year. No movement. So if there's no significant movement in your life in one year, will you say that year? You say that's an evil year. A year I will never want to remember. Yeah, that might have been the year of your preparation. Listen, there are no promotions in preparation. Many times we, we want promotion instead of... Thank you, Holy Spirit. It takes time to prepare. Jesus was prepared for 30 years for a thing that would just last for three years and six months. Three years and some months. So imagine being prepared for 30 years for something that will only just take, that will only last for three years plus. How many of you would take that? Say, so, no, let him use the, the, the months to prepare me for the years. <laughs> That's how many times, have you noticed that many times the man of God leaves and means to start plateauing? Jesus left many thousand, everybody keeps saying 2,000 years ago. I don't understand. I mean, <laughs> it's more than 2,000. Because it's, every time you hear people say 2,000 years ago, he died. 10 years ago to 2,000 years ago. I don't get that one. It's over 2,000 years ago. Let's face it the way it really is. More than 2,000 years ago, a man left the earth. His ministry has grown from, you know, just grown bigger every day in expansive measure, in leaps and buying, in, in an exponential form of the spirit. How many ministries experience that? The man of God is still more, the woman is still more. It's interesting to find that members are leaving, buildings are growing old, the, the, the new pastors are, are having black teeth. <laughs> the teachings are now changing. But look at Jesus. That's the place and the power of preparation. Let God prepare you and stop running up and down. Some days ago, I was seeing a lot about social media and I was seeing people's uh, videos and I was seeing views. Uh, like someone just posted, uh, uh, my dog talked back at me, 4 million views. Uh, uh, compilation of cat responses to pressure, 7 million views. Then Pastor A.K.A. Goliath, um, 150 something thousand views. And I said, Lord, how do they get these views? <laughs> what, what have I done? <laughs> but I, I said, Lord, but I, I'm deeper than these guys. They don't even know anything. This rubbish are getting views. <laughs> what about? The Lord didn't wait for me to waste time. He said, listen, and listen very well. This is, I'm just quoting the Lord. He said, listen, and listen very well. You have not started. That I'm allowing you to do social media doesn't mean you have started. Just don't have this conversation with me again. You have not started. So why bother about those who have started when you have not started? There are those who are looking for RPM. They want to see, they want to see my crusades. This is just me keeping my sheep going. <laughs> Feeding them because it's feed, feed my sheep. It didn't say sheep must be more for you to feed them. So I'm just, these are, these are meetings to feed my sheep. <laughs> when I start, the world will not stand. When I start, the world will not stand. Politicians will not steal. When I start... When I start, the Lord lets them we hide. When I start, nations will tremble. Politicians will beg on their knees. When I start, oh, Shebo, kids are fajida, sector grashta. When I start, don't confuse this means of feeding my sheep all over the world for starting. I have not started. When I start, no human president will stay in office more than the stipulated time of the Constitution. Nobody. It will surprise you. So, there is, the, there is the place of understanding the timing of God for your life. That's an important one. Understanding the timing of God for your life is important. 
Especially for those of you who, who see others marrying and you say, ah, your mates are marrying, you, you, you are left behind. Did you start out together at the same time? Is marriage the measure of progress? You'll be married. No, you'll be married. Marriage is not the, the measure for progress. You'll be married. The greatest men in this world were born, a number of them were even born out of wedlock. I'm not subscribing to that, okay? I'm not recommending that. That those who say, their marriage will be the talk of town. No, I want my outreach to be the talk of town. I want the crusades to be the talk of not, not marriage. Say, um, they will give their mothers the burial of a poop. <laughs> That's what the guy said. Let me say this to you. Don't let the, the foolishness of man become your motivation. That a man buried his mother in a stupid way and it was the talk of the town. It, it just, those are the ways of foolish people. Those are the ways of foolish people. Never be tempted to say, because a certain guy buried the mother with several cows and money was everywhere. Those are, those are, um, there, there's something I'm, I, 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 I mean to say that may come as an offense, but something very important. The, the, the present, if you, if you are familiar with the Nigerian um, um, cultures and the regions and the tribes, you know there's the one they call the Igbo, the Igbo people, the Igbo tribe. Um, without meaning to offend anyone, the present Igbo generation, the present generation are far more foolish than their fathers. The Namde Ezekiel generation were much wiser, much wiser than these present ones. So don't, don't copy them. If you, if you belong to that region, let, let the wisdom of Christ be what you live with. Don't, don't, don't give in to a certain man who doesn't know anything, um, having to do a, an event, or a burial, they call it, and, and so much happened there, and everybody was there, and all that nonsense. It's nothing. Don't, don't ever, I, I've said it time and again, do not let the motivation of the lost be your motivation. Don't be inspired by foolishness. Don't forget that. Do not be, don't, don't ever be inspired by foolishness. Don't let foolishness inspire you. And you have the same thing with black Americans. You find uh, black Americans who, who make small money. They start wearing all kinds of chains. They buy the most expensive wrist watches. It's, I, I can tell you m many times the, the, the whites laugh at them. Because the richest amongst them, the, the, the rich, the real rich people, the white ones, you don't find them that way. It is the slave mentality that most blacks are carrying. This is the reason for racism. Because of that mentality. The white man thinks differently. Black man is a footballer. First salary, one by Rose Rose. Rose Rose. For, for training. Lamborghini. That's what they do. Many blacks. Most Africans and South Americans, because of where they are coming from. Go and look at the cars. People like Warren Buffett, right? Jeff Bezos. The billionaires. Black man who makes more money, who have a mansion in Miami, have another in Los Angeles, that he may never stay. Then he goes broke. A machine bought for 65 million, looking forward to buy it for 2 million. Many of them are like that. Go and buy tiger for pets. Lion for nephew. You start to wonder, who are these? Who are these? 
then you see Mark Zuckerberg on the street in a short, no more sander, no more wrist touch. Musicians, diamond crested, 120 million naira dollars wrist watch. Fools. Fools. Car collections. Look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk doesn't have a house. He sold out everything. He just he now has a, a little one rented or something that he lives in. Built some, something small. Nothing else. You won't find Elon Musk today wearing diamond plated trainers. That's what you find with blacks. Showing the biggest parties. Showing enough cars. Thank God I'm not a black man. Thanks be unto Jesus who didn't make me a black man. I give you praise. So how do you say you're not a black man? I'm not a black man. Does this look black to you? <laughs> I have the mentality of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I think like Christ. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's here. It's not about the skin. It's here. Here. Wealth is here. Poverty is here. It's a mentality. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So quickly, Elijah said to Elisha, the Lord has sent me to, to Jericho. And he said to Elijah, as the Lord lives, where you go, I'm going with you. And he went to Jericho with him. And then he said, the Lord has sent me beyond Jordan. When you are tested, will you still stand? When your loyalty is tested, when your commitment is tested, will you still be there? But it tells us, he who endures to the end shall be saved. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Glory to God. So let's, let's quickly get this straight. Back to Deuteronomy. Chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 quickly, verse 23. Oh, be there, be there, be there quickly. Please be there. We need to catch it. We need to catch it. And he brought us out from things. Thank you, Jesus, that God has brought us. But let's not stop there. He's brought us out, but let's not stop there. He brought us out from things. He saved us. That's what he's telling you now. That he might bring us in. That he might bring us in. Are you there? That he might bring us in. In for what? To give us the land which he swear unto our fathers. So quickly, look at it. In the, new, in the new creation contest, in the New Testament contest, what does that mean? He saved us. You have to follow now. He saved us. So that's the parallel, okay, of brought us out. He saved us. That he might bring us in, or he brought us out to bring us in. That he brought us in, mean he brought us into oneness with Christ. Oh, that's, that's a long one. He brought us in, into what? Into oneness with Christ. Do you get that now? So look at the, the, the two parallel lines. He brought us out. So he brought us out is the first stage which parallels with he saved us. All right? You can have um, scriptures for that. Quickly, he brought us out, okay? Okay, that's, that's, that's important. To, 
to, uh, and he brought us in. That paralyzed with, uh, to, he brought us into oneness. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful who had brought us into oneness, who has called us into oneness, into fellowship with his son. Oh, I, I, can't even, I can't even try starting that one now. I won't even dare touch it. I can't even touch it now. Let's just finish it. Let, let's, let, let's, let's finish it, the paralyzed. It says, to give us the land. What does that equate with or parallel with in the new covenant uh, contest? It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your father's good pleasure to give. Because in the Old Testament, he gave them Canaan. In the New Testament, he tells us it's the kingdom he brought us out to give us. I need you to be quick right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He brought us out. Oh boy, look at it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he brought us out some days that he might bring us in. I, I want you guys to, I want you all to learn this today. To learn this today because many times we stop so quickly. <sighs> He brought us out is good. He didn't bring us out just to bring us in. Mm -mm. That means he didn't just save us so we can be one with Christ. That's not all. There's something greater in mind. There's something bigger for which he saved us. He, he saved us to make us one with Christ to give us the kingdom. It says in Luke chapter 12, and you read from verse 36, it says, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hush. Let's, let's take that out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Oh, boy. Look at the 12. There's something I'm trying to communicate to you. I'm starting somewhere. And I'm going somewhere. Book of Luke chapter 12. Hmm. Oh boy. You, you, listen, I have been trying to tell you for some time now that your salvation is not an end. It's a means to an end. Your salvation it's not God's highest goal in mind concerning you. That you are born again should not mean you pack your bags now. I've, I've been saved, I'll make heaven. There is more to your salvation than being saved. Quickly. Hallelujah, glory. Oh boy. Are you there? Book of Luke chapter 12. Let me take you through this quickly. From verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravings, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor burn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If he then be not able to do that which is least. You see, Jesus tells us uh, uh, the ability to, to increase in height is least. So if you are trusting God for height, it's a least thing. <laughs> God can do that for you. Say, I want to be tall like, I want to be as tall as Arpia. You may not be as tall as Arpia, but you can, you can add some. Okay. You say, why not? Verse 26. <laughs> if you then be not able to do, how many, how many of these height do you find in, in hundreds and in thousands of people? It's, it's not ordinary. Verse 26 again. If you then be, able, be not able to do that which is least, why take it for the rest? 
Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cut into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what you shall drink, neither be your doubtful mind. Jesus is talking about don't be consumed with, with desires. Don't be consumed with things, the, 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 the cares of life. That's what he's telling you. It doesn't mean he's saying don't work, don't have money. He said don't be consumed of them. Don't serve them. Verse 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not. Look at verse 32, people. This is big. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure <laughs> to give you the kingdom. <laughs> okay. Let's look at it quickly. He brought us out. That he might bring us in to give us the land. What does that mean? He saved us. That he might make us one with Christ to give us the kingdom. Do you know what it means to have the kingdom of God as inheritance? Do you, do you even know what that means at all? To say the kingdom of God is my inheritance. Many times the saints are taught wrongly to think the kingdom of God is heaven. The kingdom of God is not heaven. The kingdom of God is the, is the, is the realm of God's sovereignty. Alright? The kingdom of God is the, is the realm of God's sovereignty. Uh, you see, you have to understand that the kingdom of God is everything. Everything, heaven, earth, hell, and everything there is. Of course, we 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 define um, the the we, we define the the very um, the core of the kingdom to you. We won't say it's a realm. It's a realm. It's a realm where um, the presence of God is the highest goal of the of the poor that dwell and all of that. Yeah, that's 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 a realm of His kingdom, but the kingdom in His in his over in in his expansive reign, in his expansive um, uh, in his all compassing uh, scope, is everything. The kingdom of God is everything. It says the earth is the lost, the fullness of the world, and they that dwell therein. That's the kingdom of God. Everything. When you read in Psalms one hundred three, tells you. Oh boy, let's let's read that quickly. Let me show you something there. Book of Psalms one hundred and three. Oh boy, a quick one. The kingdom of God is the all compassive realm of his sovereignty. The kingdom of God is the all compassing realm of his sovereignty. To be sovereign means to have all authority. And all authorities of God. The all compassing realm of his sovereignty. Psalms 103. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory. Oh, boy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's learn something about it. From verse 8, Psalms 103, from verse 8, the, 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 the verse of interest is verse 19. But let's have verse 8 just to add, up, add some knowledge. Verse 8. You, you know how Daniel described the kingdom of God. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, they said that, that you may know that the heavens do rule. <laughs> He said that you may know that the heavens do rule. 
as in Daniel chapter 4, verse 26. It says that you may know that the heavens do rule. You'll be sent out amongst men. You'll be, you'll be wet for seven times. You will eat grass and the dust, but your, your stomp will be left. That means your kingdom will be restored back to you when you have been through that you may know that the heavens do rule. <laughs> you know, the first time I read that portion, something, something happened on my inside. It stirred this pride in my father in me that you may know that the heavens do rule. But it's correct because in 19 here, it says his kingdom rules over all. Let's look at it. Look at it. Verse 8, Psalms 103. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Because if you hear this thing, many things don't know where they are in the Bible. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always cheat, neither will he keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as he is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord had, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as, as a flower of the field, so he flourished. For the wind passed over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. Glory to God. To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandment to them, to do commandments to do them. The Lord, watch it. The Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruled in heaven. Is that what you have? No. He says his kingdom ruled over all. And he says it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Did you see that? First Thessalonians 2. Sheba koma dila shuta. Ooh. You know, having this knowledge is one of the reasons Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep series. Why? Why do you have to feed the sheep? Oh, learn it. Oh boy, thank you Lord. First Thessalonians. Chapter 2. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this, just, this, this just completes it. From 11. 11 and 12. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father taught his children, that they will walk worthy of God. Who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. Did you see that? He, he brought us out that he might bring us in to give us his kingdom. Did you see that? So, the reign, the reign of God's reign is his kingdom. And God has, he says, it's my good pleasure. To give you the kingdom. Brothers and sisters. Now that you are born again. I want this to sink today. Now that you are born again. You have become. A citizen of God's kingdom. Now you live in God's kingdom. You are not about to come in. You are there now. You are there now. So yay. We can celebrate that. But that's not what the salvation should be about. That's good, but that's not what it should be about yet. I want to take note of this statement quickly. 
I better take note of this statement now, quickly. Now that you are in the kingdom, hallelujah, now that you are in the kingdom, are you there? Beautiful. How well you prosper in that kingdom or in the kingdom. How well you prosper in the kingdom depends absolutely ha, ha, ha. is there? Depends absolutely on your understanding of spiritual things. Such as he who has called you and the things that belong to your peace. Such as he who has called you and the things that belong to your peace. Hallelujah. Let's go. Through this understanding, through this understanding, you grow in fellowship. Oh boy. You grow in fellowship. And attain to fullness. Attain to fullness of all things. Okay? I'm not done, please. You attain to fullness of all things, right? With which you fulfill your ministry. With which you fulfill your ministry. All right? Your ministry, you could have finished after ministry. Your ministry, are you there? Of showing forth God. Come on. Of showing forth God. Come on. Replicating and reproducing God for all to see. Replicating and reproducing God for all to see and to glorify your Father which is in heaven. And to glorify your Father which is in heaven. In bracket, reigning in life. Ha ha ha, great to God. Together. There's, there's, there are things about this I, I want to communicate to you because there's a lot here that we may not finish in, in days or in months, but let's just start somewhere. Hallelujah. As a child of God, you can take note, please. As a child of God, One of the first things as a child of God, one of the first things you must strive towards one of the first things you must strive towards is understanding spiritual things. Okay? 
in bracket, the things that belong to your peace. The things that belong to your peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Did you get that? Full stop. Reason, however, is this. The reason, however, is this. How much you profit in God and the things of God. How much you profit in God and the things of God depends absolutely on your understanding of spiritual things. Hmm. You get that? For example, that's e.g. Faith is a product of understanding. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith is a product of understanding. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Number two, fellowship is also a product of understanding. First John chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Hallelujah. That is the reason, that is the reason why as you come into God's kingdom, that's the reason why as you come into God's kingdom, you there? He lavishes on you the spirit of wisdom and understanding. And in bracket, you have Ephesians chapter 1, verses 8, 7 and 8. Who oh, Shakila Hasabashka? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I want to just um, round up the meeting in this arena, in this region of thought. And then the next meeting, we'll look into the other important areas. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. And I don't want you distracted or, or struggling or sleeping, or uh, distracting someone. Please don't do that. But there's a lot the Lord is telling me. Listen, you, you wonder why you find people who, who are always, um, who, who look religious, but have no testimonies. You see, your knowledge of Christ is in your testimonies. How much you know Christ is in your testimonies? It is not in anything else. Hmm. Let me show you something. <laughs> it, 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 listen, listen. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 3, Paul says something here. He says, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, 
So people want to see the proof of Christ you claim. He says, since you, you seek the proof of Christ speaking in me, so what is your proof of Christ in you? Your proof is in your testimonies. Since you seek the proof, you, you, want to, you, you want to see that Christ really speaks in me, that is Christ in me. What is your proof? To some, he said, if I be no apostle to others, doubtless to you I am. Because the seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. He said, but we'll come to the realm of vision and revelations. And then I will show you how I minister the spirit of God to you. What is your proof? Listen, knowledge must have proof. What's your proof? I told you that Christianity is a proof producing life. That's what it is. It's the proof producing life. You, you can't just say I'm a child of God without proofs. How can you prove it? And God knows we live in a world that seeks after signs, after evidence, after proofs. And so we come into Christ and the first thing he does is to lavish on us wisdom and understanding. Listen, without understanding spiritual things, you just be a noise-making child of God. Because the understanding of spiritual things is the secret to activating the blessing. Understanding spiritual things is the secret to activating the blessing. That's the secret. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Parashida Bokotina Sisa. Oh, Jalabran discusses. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are so grateful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, don't, don't come into the kingdom and be stranded in God's kingdom. Don't come into God's kingdom and be lost, not knowing what to do, what to go, how to go from there. Having come into God's kingdom, you need to start activating the things that work. You start to activate the blessings. He has blessed us. But why is it not working? Because it's not been activated. Understanding activates the blessing. Understanding is not what works and doing it. It's having the know-how. What works? Knowing what works and doing it. What really works as a child of God? What really works in Christ? What is the secret to the supernatural? What is the secret? What is the secret to activating angels? How do angels, why do God's children with angels suffer what they suffer? How do you have such... It tells us that when you're born again, you come into the company of innumerable angels. In Hebrews 12, read it from verse 18 down. It says, you have not come to the mouth that burns with, with fire and tempest. So table was inside that Moses said, I, I quaked and trembled. He said, but you have come unto Mount Zion. You have come unto the city of the living God. You have come unto the company, heavenly Jerusalem, then to the company of innumerable angels. You have come. 
You mean we have angels and our lives are still this way? Yes. Why? Because though you have come to that company, you don't know how to activate the angels. How does the angelic ministry really work? In Hebrews 1.14, it tells us that the angels are ministers for sent forth to minister for us. Not just to us, but for us. Angels minister for us. So if angels minister for us, why then do God's children die in the presence of angels? Huh. Oh. How can you have angels and you go through life struggling? Did you read about Elijah under the juniper tree? In 1 Kings 19, how Elijah laid down, he fled from Jezebel's strength. And while he was under that juniper tree, the Bible tells us an angel of the Lord came and woke him up and, and, and said to him, food was ready. Abba, shig, abba, yeah. The angel baked cake and said, food is ready. Have you ever enjoyed such provision of an angel with, 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 a, with a bottle of water by the side? He tapped him and said, food is ready, Elijah. And Elijah just got up, took the cake, baked in the fire, still hot. Angel didn't steal it, baked it for him there. Elijah took the cake, ate it and took water and laid back to sleep. He didn't even wait for it to digest. I don't know what was happening to Elijah. He was exhausted, you know. And so... By evening again, the angel got, came back, woke him to eat again. Now, what is the lesson that God is telling us? There's only like three square meals a day. You should eat twice a day, like good meal, meal, not snacking, like meal twice a day. There are those who want to eat three times a day, and it must be all heavy. But God is showing us an important lesson. And he says he will need the strength of that food for a 40-day journey. Will that take you for one day? Now, this is 40 days. All right. Okay, so uh, the question is, Elijah, that was Elijah's angel, of course. And then we're told of Peter in prison. You know, Peter was a lazy guy. Because when Paul and Sarah were in prison, Paul and Sarah, they prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. The angel, the, 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 tells us, the Bible tells us that Paul and Sarah, the prisoners heard them. But in Peter's case, he was sleeping. <laughs> Peter was sleeping. What a man. What a poop. <laughs> Peter was sleeping. Between soldiers, the church was making prayers and Peter was sleeping. But, but, but that's a good one to a degree. Uh, you know, I, I will explain that another time. And so in his sleep, Bashaka, can you please learn this? Peter was sleeping. He was at the rest in the prison. There are lessons about that we're not learning. Now. And it tells us that the angel of the Lord came and tapped Peter. Has, have you ever even seen an angel to talk of tapping you? Hasha, do these things I'm saying stay? Do they challenge you? I have angels that, why not say, Lord, if I have angels, what are their names? I, I want to know my angel. What is it? You don't even know your angels. What are their names? And then they tap it and the chase just fell off of their own accord. <laughs> that what? Let's just say that when we're looking at the works of God, we we'll check that out. The, the church just up there on the change. And, this, and, this, and the soldiers didn't hear this sound, they were still sleeping. We should start looking at the works and deeds of God, you know, to just to build our faith on that level one day. We just open our meeting and have the, the, the acts of God. We have the acts of God, we have the acts of God now. Okay. So Peter just stood up and he thought he was still dreaming. Because it tells us when the Lord turned again at captivity, we're like them that do. So Peter thought he was still dreaming. And then they said, Go. The gates opened of their own accord to Peter. Ah, dear God. Peter wasn't praying. The church was praying. And, 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 and the prayer of the church was enough to get Peter out. This is what brings me to a point. I, I start to walk the edge, the precipice of situation where I say, Lord, I'm, I'm not happy. What is it? 
Peter's angel. He just tapped him and Peter, Peter walked until he got to the house and knocked and the church didn't even believe it was Peter. They are praying. And Peter is the least. They don't believe. This is what happens in our churches today where they pray and then they say miracle, they say it's of the devil. But we prayed for a miracle. And then he comes, we say it's the devil that did it. Who did we pray to God? Who gave miracle to God? But why can't we say it's the devil? That's what you have with our churches today. Every miracle is of the devil, but we pray to God for a miracle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, glory. Just bless the Lord right now. Just honor the Lord right now. Whatever you are, I want you to just go ahead and take an offering to honor the Lord. Because it tells us we should honor the Lord without substance. There is no other way to honor the Lord. Let no man deceive you. It tells us to honor the Lord without substance. And with the first fruits of our increase. So go ahead right now. Take your offerings. Take your tithe. Take your first fruit. Take your special offering. Whatever it is. Your oblations. Your ministry's budget. Whatever it is. Just go ahead and take them right now. And if you're, if you're viewing this meeting right now. You're participating virtually. The accounts are on your screen. All of the account details. Wherever you are, all the accounts are there. And you can follow the process and, the, and how to go about them. Just go ahead and offer them. And I pray that the Lord will have respect to your offerings. May he honor them. May he cause your band to overflow with plenty. May your vat overflow with new wine. May the blessing rest upon you. Let it come back to you. In good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. May God bless and increase you. May the sufficiencies of God become your, your portion. Experience overflow. May the grace of God that came upon my life in my sleep. And God kept on me in my sleep and said, I have, He said, Welcome to the six digit life. A few years ago, from that day, Millions began to come into my life. It's been from one level of glory to another. I keep giving out in millions and they keep coming back. This happened in my sleep. May that grace rest upon your offerings. Let that grace bring you to the six digit level. Where you are in your millions. And I pray that the Lord will help you to be faithful at the level you are. So that the promotion will not bring your fall. And I pray that the Lord will help you not to stumble from your steadfastness. I pray that the Lord will help your love never to wash cold, but may he kindle an everlasting fire in your being. Fire that will never go out. Thank you, Father. Oh, I rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Oh, shalabangra this tamashka. Raki jalapasa. Like the grace that was upon the Macedonian Christians. Let that rest on you. The grace to give bountifully. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. So right now, if you are out there participating in this meeting, in person or virtual, okay, virtual participation, I want to bring you to the family of God. Regardless of where you are right now, you see, your sins are so many. That's why Jesus died. I don't think God needs someone like me. That's why Jesus died. I'm too dirty. That's why Jesus died. Now, I want to just pray this very quick prayer with me. And right now, that life will be communicated to your human spirit and things will start to change in your life. Say after me right now. Oh, Lord God, I believe that you love me and that you offered your son, Jesus Christ, in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification. Today, I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my Savior. I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith, I receive the remission of sins of my soul. I receive eternal life of my spirit. And I declare, I am born again. I declare, the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare, I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life, and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Amen. <laughs> Ika patela gloria perisato Ibragina sacradi meredose frokitaba rabashi kabela endo cobra irakata labroko rabakashi berediri poso freke dele manda Krista rabababababokoso in the name of Jesus Hallelujah Oh, glory to God. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations to you. Welcome to the family of God. You have now become a citizen of God's family. God's kingdom, heaven belongs to you now. You're welcome. Congratulations to you. Please feel free to reach out to me on, our, on all our social media platforms. Let me know you gave your life to Christ through that meeting and you want to learn more about going to grow, okay? But one of the ways to grow is to keep fellowshipping with us. You know, you don't grow in isolation. You grow in the context of fellowship. So keep fellowship with us, all right? Go check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere you find us, all right? And then our addresses for all our meetings are there. You, you locate anyone close to you and start fellowship with us, all right? Glory to God. Jesus said, the amount of meditation you give to the word, to that same essence, to that same degree, virtue, revelation, insight shall be multiplied to you. When you hear the word of God, what really happens to you is that you are inspired, challenged, motivated, and refreshed. The blessing begins in the doing of the word. So the blessing of the word of God is activated by doing the word. It says, be not here as only deceiving your own selves. James chapter 1 22 to 25. Be not hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So I, I challenge you to begin to practice the word. And Jesus said, when you do his word, say, I am my father, we come, I will make our abode with you. You want, it, you want God to, our, to make his abode with you? Then start to practice God's word. Meditate it. Because to practice the word of God, you have to, you have to understand it. To understand the word of God, you have to meditate it. And you know, meditation must be intentional. It doesn't happen by accident. So you meditate the word to understand it. As you understand, you practice. You practice it, you activate the blessing. It says the word of God is life to those who find it. Jesus said the amount of meditation, hallelujah, the amount of meditation you give to the word to that same essence, to that same degree, virtue, revelation, insight shall be multiplied to you. As you meditate it, insight is given to you and through that insight you receive of god's word you practice it and you find you start having uncommon results in life you know we are not of them that just hear the word of god we are them that understand the things that belong to our peace and give performance to them you want the word of god to be life to you then there are things you must do number one he says my son pay attention to my word you must pay attention to it. Number two, it says, incline your ears to my saying. You must incline your ears to the sayings of God's word. Number three, it says, keep them in the midst of your eyes. And then he says, number four, let them not depart from your heart. Why? He says, when you do these things, it shall become life to you. So when you want to become life, rather than just letter, you must do this for things.